focus and energy to stay on task is one challenge, allowing ourselves to take risks is another. It takes courage to face our own creativity and discipline it to produce the things we want. A member shared, I don't feel I have the freedom on the inside to do what I have the ability to do on the outside. I see that as a future freedom. Awareness is not the same as control. We don't automatically get freedom from our defects just because we see them. Awareness gives us hope and direction. Sometimes that can be a motivator to get us working, and sometimes the best we can do is wait. When we can't see our way around a defect or an obstacle, it's often because there is other work that must be done first. Self-acceptance frees our imagination. Work on the immense steps allows us to feel worthy of success. The answers are in different places for each of us, and we may not know them until we found them. Doing the work of recovery frees us in ways we can't predict. It's only in experiencing freedom that we learn we were bound before. Goals are dreams we put into action. We can understand the work and measure our progress more easily if we break our goals down into steps. After all, we know a thing or two about doing things in steps. Setting achievable goals and celebrating milestones along the way allows us to see our progress, and gives us moments when we can step back and evaluate where we are and where we are going. Education. Addiction can be pretty disruptive to education. Some of us stopped early in the process, or never felt engaged by it at all. There are gaps in our knowledge, either as a result of our addiction or where we come from, and these can be a source of shame as well. Lack of information is not a character defect, it's just something we don't know yet. There is a difference between not knowing and not being teachable. Recovery is an education. We are learning principles and practicing a new way of life. In the process, we learn to read, write, care, share, practice, show up, and keep coming back. The abilities we develop if we work with steps are easily transferable. When we apply these skills to other kinds of learning, we tend to do surprisingly well, even though the method may be very different. Even if we are starting at the beginning, there are few limits to how far we can go. Many of us go back to school after we get clean, and we can be surprised at the challenges we confront. Even a training program at work can be intimidating when we are not used to learning that way. It's not something all of us do, and many of us go back for a little while and Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 6 A New Way of Life 103 Decide it's not for us I was grateful for the opportunity, but I also found out I didn't have to do that, said a member we may go back to school because we need new skills, or just because we want to try something new. I had really distorted ideas about what society was, said one member, and what the playing field was. Before I could fully participate, I had to learn how it worked. We learn more than just the subject we are studying. We learn how to learn. Just as our bodies were damaged by our addiction, our brains have taken a beating. Whatever we study, whether it's playing the guitar, welding, knitting, or philosophy, learning gives our minds a workout. We can see and feel the healing as we practice absorbing and retaining information. We learn to work under pressure and to accept feedback. We learn to persevere through a learning curve. Impatience is a stumbling block. 
We want to know something, not to learn it. Studying is an exercise in staying focused. Our practice at being teachable is a good start. Some of us go back to school with a specific plan in mind, but we can surprise ourselves. The joy of learning can be its own reward. We may not know what we are good at, and chances are we're smarter than we think. I believed I was stupid because it took me so many years of relapsing to get clean, a member shared. Getting a degree helped me to believe in my own intelligence. Being open-minded about our talents can allow us to follow a path we had not imagined. Many of us share the feeling that we must catch up or make up for the time lost to our addiction. We struggle with the feeling that we are somehow just not enough. Making time for our commitments at school and in not can be a lesson in balance. We may imagine that all of our classmates are using, or that, they, are a unit we don't fit into. We can be insecure and judgmental at the same time. The process was surprisingly emotional, shared a member. I wore my recovery like armor. I felt lonely and unnoticed, but I didn't have the self-acceptance to let anyone in. If we tend toward perfectionism at all, chances are we'll get to confront it when we go to school. A member shared, I felt like a failure if I got less than a perfect score on a test. I couldn't sleep until I figured out where I had gone wrong. I wasn't competing against the other students, I was competing against my own fear. Right behind perfectionism is a wall of shame. Any misstep feels like it opens a window on that secret. Suggestions feel like criticism, and criticism feels like condemnation. Often we act as if our lives will really begin at some future time. When we get a certain amount of free in time, when we finish school, when we get that job, or when our lives have magically become manageable. In a, just for today, program, we learn that what matters is not what will happen at a future date. Our lives are what we're doing right now. The way we live on the way to our goals is the way we live. All trees require deep roots. We need to ensure that we are taking the time to build and maintain our foundation as we move forward. Money. Whether we have a lot of it or very little, most of us have a challenging relationship to money. There is no one right set of values, but we do have principles that we practice. Our seventh tradition talks about being self-supporting through our own contributions, and while the Living Clean Approval Graph for Decision at WSC 2012 104 Tradition makes direct reference to the groups. Many of us find that practicing the principle in our own lives is essential to experiencing freedom. We learn to support ourselves financially, and we find that there are other ways in which we can practice self-support. We learn to carry our own weight, clean up our own mess, and contribute in the places that are important to us. It can be very hard for us to share about our relationship to money. Sharing honestly about this with our sponsor can open the door to healing in all areas of our lives. Having money and working may be totally unrelated when we get here. We found the financial resources that we needed in our active addiction in all sorts of other ways. We stole, we manipulated, we took advantage, we persuaded others of our entitlement. We were takers, and we squandered the resources that were made available to us. In our self-centeredness we were oblivious to the toll we took on the people around us. The awareness that we might 
never be able to repay what we owe can be part of the force that drives us to a new way of life. We owe a debt, and every time we act in the service of a greater good we can feel something shifting inside us. We have a contribution to make, and making it is not a sacrifice, it serves us at least as much as those we serve. The sense of entitlement that enabled us to live as we did in our addiction can follow us into recovery. Often it shows up in more subtle forms. We don't steal people's purses anymore, but it may seem perfectly reasonable to take supplies from work, to shop with the little, to continue taking advantage of people. We may know that this kind of dishonesty is wrong, but harbor the sense that we're not being paid what we're worth, that we deserve a break we're not getting, or that the people we serve at work, at home, or in not should be more grateful than they are. Sometimes it shows up in our distrust of others, we constantly suspect that someone is trying to get over on us. This simmering resentment can be incredibly destructive, we see not what we have but what we lack. We feel our vulnerability rather than our security. It's hard to be happy when the world feels like a hostile place. Learning to practice faith and gratitude does not mean that we give up our street smarts. It means we start to develop a different kind of intelligence. We can stand up for ourselves without feeling like we are fighting for our lives. We begin to trust that our needs will be met, and to see the imperfections in our circumstances as opportunities rather than barriers to growth. Even in recovery, obsession and compulsion play out in our spending habits. We shop impulsively or compulsively, and get obsessed with having the newest or the best. We use our money unwisely in an attempt to fill the void. We want to buy love, approval, or the appearance of success. I thought I could buy my way out of addiction, said one member. Money becomes one more way to play out our control issues, and we get so rigid that we create more problems than we solve. Or we simply let money and opportunities go by, feeling like poverty is probably appropriate for us. Some of us find that it's not stuff that attracts us, but the pursuit. This drive can bring us to great success or it can be the compulsion that fuels yet another symptom of our addiction. We are the only ones who really know the truth. If we are gambling, working the system, opening and closing businesses, hearing from financial success to failure and back again, we might want to take a look at what we're up to. It can be difficult to admit that we have a troubled relationship with money, sharing honestly with someone we trust can begin the living clean approval draft for decision at WSC 2012. Chapter 6, A New Way of Life, 105, Process of Change, Financial Unmanageability is often a symptom of a larger issue. Like so many things we struggle with, it is a practical problem with a spiritual solution. Very small things, one member shared, like paying the bills on time, gave me a feeling of self-worth. Another member shared that she began to overcome her resentment of paying her bills by writing, thank you for your services, on her payments. Simply meeting our own obligations can be a victory. For some of us, this resolves quickly. Others spend a lifetime learning to manage. Financial turmoil is not unusual for non-members, but it is not a requirement. Acting out on our disease has financial consequences. But many of the ways we show our recovery have financial consequences, too. 
This doesn't mean that when we are working our program we get rich. Some of us never make as much money in recovery as we did when we were using, and being responsible can be expensive. But many of us find success in recovery, and do achieve financial comfort. When we are practicing sanity and living within our means, we can be comfortable with ourselves and our circumstances, no matter what they are. We also learn to ask for help when we need it. Many of us struggle in recovery when we become sick or disabled because our beliefs about being self-supporting make it hard to seek the assistance we may desperately need. The humility we learn from working the steps allows us to ask for help when necessary, and to know that we are neither too good to have needs nor too bad to deserve a hand. We may find that what we want is very different from what we need, and learning to adapt to our circumstances can give us a flexibility that we hadn't imagined before. We learn to accept help, and find other ways to contribute as well. Losing everything isn't a life sentence, just as having it all doesn't mean we will not be in need again. Prudence is a principle some of us practice more than others. It's a funny word, but it's what we are talking about when we refer in service to a prudent reserve. A member shared, I learned to be responsible and prudent with not funds, so I don't misappropriate other people's funds either. I have learned the principles of honesty and accountability. It's part of walking my talk and applying the principles. In service, we learn to take on obligations thoughtfully to ensure that we can follow through on what we promise. In other areas of our lives as well, we find that planning and following through makes us feel good about ourselves. We do our best to ensure that we can be responsible even if our circumstances change. I went through a hard time in my business and had to live off my savings for a while. I was ashamed to talk about it in meetings, but I shared with a fellow addict. Later he told me that this was a message of hope for him. Because I planned ahead, I was able to make it through a tough time. What I saw as a failure, he saw as a success. One more time, I gained a better perspective on my life. We also notice in Na that those who do not give it away tend not to keep it. The idea that giving is a crucial part of having is something many of us are surprised to discover. We may or may not have material wealth, but our emotional, spiritual, and mental resources are enormous. We have a wealth of experience. When we give our energy, time, talent, and creativity, we are rewarded many times over. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 106 Work While the steps help us to become better people, service is one way we learn how to function in the world again. Many of the skills we learn in service translate into our working lives. We may sometimes feel like outsiders or imposters in our jobs, but in NAS service we are full participants. We don't second-guess our primary purpose or our right to participate. In a fellowship where the ultimate authority is a power greater than ourselves, we learn how to work with others as a peer with something to offer and something to learn, rather than seeing ourselves as an authority or a victim. We learn to channel our energy in a constructive direction, and we can practice staying focused. We stretch beyond our current abilities and find that we can survive and succeed even if we are not perfect. Service counteracts selfishness and increases our feelings of self-worth. We learn to step back and think before we respond.
Not everything that affects us is personal, and we don't have to return fire every time. Not gives us a safe place to make mistakes, find out who we are, and learn how to relate to people. The things that make us defensive or self-righteous tend to be pretty much the same wherever we go. We see our character defects manifesting and find humility, make amends, or just change course and start over. Everyone makes mistakes. Promptly admitting when we are wrong shows integrity and responsibility for our actions. The experience of service helps us take on responsibilities and learn to meet them as we go. We learn to sit still and listen, and to make our voice heard when we have something to say. We start to feel we can take our rightful place in the world, without feeling fear or shame. As we practice these principles in all our affairs, some of the distinctions between who we are in our work lives and in our recovery lives begin to fall away. One way we practice these principles is to be of service to our employer. Some members have asked themselves, how do I practice unity at work? How do I let my HP be in charge during my workday? What is the primary purpose of this workplace, and how can I help achieve that? What is my primary purpose here? Whatever our job is, when we can see it as an opportunity to practice our principles it becomes a worthy use of our time. A member shared, responsibility used to feel like a burden to me. Learning to see it as a way to do my higher powers will make it feel like a privilege. With spiritual principles as our guide, we can be an asset wherever we are. Often the people around us see our value before we do. Perhaps most of all, when we are spiritually connected, creativity flows through us. This doesn't necessarily mean that we paint or make music, though it can, but that we can see solutions to problems and find satisfaction in doing whatever we do as best we can. The transition from not to work is not always seamless. We may be really shocked to find that outside not the third tradition does not apply. We are not members of other groups just because we want to be. We may have to earn our seat at another table, and there are some places we may never be accepted as we would wish. Additionally, what would seem perfectly natural with our na friends can be inappropriate or even shocking elsewhere. We are conscious of how we share our feelings and our histories. We learn the difference between friendships, recovery relationships, and professional relationships, and we begin to understand that we can alter our behavior without having to compromise ourselves. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 6 A New Way of Life 107 As we advance in our step work, we are more capable of acknowledging our progress in other areas as well. The humility that we learn in the steps helps us find where we belong in the world. We start to feel that we are no better or worse than anyone else, even at work, and that our gifts are useful. One member talked about finding a job that suited his skills and ills, when we find the right environment, we see that we can be distinguished by some of the things that used to make us most uncomfortable about ourselves. Some of us are naturally industrious, and others are really good at sitting still and being present in the moment. Either one can be an asset or a defect, depending on how we use it. The guilt of being unproductive and stealing time at work feeds on itself. On the other hand, the drive to stay in constant motion can be a consequence of fear. 
When we don't take time to reflect on what we're doing and how we're doing it, small mistakes can add up quickly. As with everything else we do, we seek a healthy balance. Our issues may differ, but the principles we practice are the same. Some of us never worked before we got clean, and for others of us work was all we did. By the same token, some of us don't need to work for financial reasons, and some are too disabled to be able to work steadily anymore. Still, we can benefit from keeping a schedule and being accountable. We may resist structure in our lives, but it can help us enormously. We are, after all, creatures of habit. When we feel we have a purpose that gives shape to our days, we are more comfortable with ourselves and our lives. Our work can be something we do to fill time or to pay the bills, or it may be one of the primary ways we define ourselves. Those of us who have work that is meaningful or valuable to us are fortunate. It's a goal many of us work toward, and when we feel that we're doing a good job at something that matters, it brings a deep satisfaction. Whoever we are, wherever we come from, we have something to offer. Our work ethic is the collection of habits that determine how we use our time. When we set our minds to something, we can be exceptionally determined. Few people are ever as driven in their lives as an addict in search of a fix. When we learn to turn that determination toward healthy goals, we can achieve amazing things. We know if we do something regularly, it will become a habit for us. What begins as discipline develops into habit, and eventually it becomes a pleasure. There is danger in this method, however. Substitution can be deadly, especially when it seems to be working for us. The hallmark of our disease is progression. When we notice that our relationship to an activity has allowed us to justify unmanageability elsewhere in our lives, it's probably time for a good, hard look at our actions, our motives, and our steps. We can be haunted by feelings of inadequacy well into our recovery, and spend our time and energy trying to prove ourselves or live up to an unattainable and imaginary standard. We may swing between being very insecure and eager to please, and resisting the most basic rules and requirements of a job. Our lack of self-acceptance shows when we can't take compliments. When we feel bad about ourselves or unworthy, we tend to overcompensate. We may find ourselves covering for others or taking undesirable shifts for fear that we are somehow more expendable than others. I excelled at work, said a member, but I still didn't feel responsible or productive. Inadequacy haunted me. It can be hard to tell the difference between a genuine desire to do better and performance that's driven by fear. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 108 When fear is driving us, we may notice that procrastination becomes an issue. We are afraid to finish what we start, and begin making excuses. When I get close to the end of a project, it feels like I'm in a wind tunnel. I don't know where the resistance comes from, but it's so strong I can barely get my feet under me. We can have so many ideas and so much unfinished business that making a decision about what to do next compounds our anxiety. One addict shared that he felt like a quarter horse in a one-mile race, a great starter but a really poor finisher. Sometimes we can even use our defects to our advantage. For example, we may beat ourselves up because we procrastinate what we fear. We can 
can also use that energy to get a lot of other things done.